it's a very dedicated and very um, mentally challenging uh, type of sport to be in, but good. And at that time, you weren't still going through medical procedures, were you? No, I had pretty well finished everything for the time being. I've had a few things since then, but no, it was, it was uh, the majority of everything was, was done. So I was able to really focus on um, getting my health back and being athletic growing up all the time as a teenager. Um, mm. I really wanted to see if, see if I could get back into doing things again, so... Mm -hmm. And prior prior to that, you were involved in a volunteer organization, is that right? When you were first recovering, you joined... Um, um, yeah, actually, um, after Caitlin had died, uh, about maybe six months after, uh, somebody that I knew through a friend had given me a pamphlet for an organization called Bree Families of Ontario, and they have different chapters all over Ontario, I believe through Canada as well, but this particular one was in uh, Kitchener-Waterloo, where I was. And um, it's basically works, it works on a support system. So you're with like-minded parents that have experienced uh, the death of a child within a, a certain age category. So for my, my group was basically for infants or small children. And um, yeah, I spent about two, two years going through the group process and dealing with my grief the, the best way I could. And uh, it was very, very beneficial. I met many, many parents, uh, many, many sad stories and thought, you know, how can I give back to this? Because it, it was so very helpful for me. Um, I took some training and then decided to facilitate groups. So I started um, giving back to the organization and facilitated for probably about five maybe four or five years. And through that time as well, I became a board member for the organization. And then I sat as the chair for about a year, year and a half. And Unbelievable. You don't do anything half, do you? No. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> um, after the end of the, that period of time, I was moving back to the Niagara region. And I decided after 10 years, you know, I really, I, I had taken my time to grieve. I had moved on. Um, I'd given back to the organization that I truly thought was, you know, so helpful and influential in my life. Um, it was time to sort of pack it away in a safe place and put it on the shelf. And I really wanted to, to move forward and, and concentrate on um, different opportunities in my life. So, Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And you have. We'll, yeah. we'll get to that. But I do have a question for if you have any suggestions for someone who has lost a young child. Mm -hmm. um, what do you suggest? How, how do you even start the healing process? Um, I think you have to really open yourself up and allow yourself to grieve at whatever stage that child's life was at. Um, it, the process is the same whether your child is, you know, a six-month-old infant or stillbirth or, you know, a, an eight-year-old child. The process is still the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the circumstances are different, but the process is still the same. And for the parent, um, you just need to really work through that grief and, and make sure it's on a healthy level and not um, all-consuming, you know, years down the road. I mean, there is there is a timeline where you have to start to, to question whether it's still healthy behavior and, and healthy healing or whether it's it's not. But um, And network yourself with people that can support you. And if you can't get the support through family or friends, then you need to seek out that support and um, in my particular case uh, I didn't have a lot of spousal support my, my husband was not on the same page I was yeah. he grieved uh, significantly differently and um, it creates a lot of problems especially in relationships so some yeah. marriages can get through it and others it's not not a good <laughs> not a good thing yeah so. absolutely mm -hmm. so the organization that you spoke of is a, is a great starting point I absolutely guess, yeah and it's a great place for um, parents to, to connect with other families so uh, there's things as we all know you know when you're grieving about something if you can be with people that are you know like-minded and dealing with the same thing it's easier to communicate with them than it is a friend who has no experience whatsoever in what you're talking about so yeah, yeah. did you ever have anger anger yeah I was angry for a long time yeah. I was angry at everything I was angry at the world I was angry at my body because you know it uh, I couldn't do what I wanted it to do I was angry because my marriage was failing I was angry because I lost my job through it all I was angry yeah I was angry because <laughs> I, I would I would imagine that would be come up but it just sounds like maybe because you processed it now when I speak well now that we're speaking mm -hmm. it just sounds like 
you were so hopeful through the whole thing, as in, you know, you were so positive through the whole thing, and I just think... You know, I I tried the best I could to be yeah. positive, but I lost many, many friendships through it because they didn't understand, you know, the way I was dealing with things. Um, and I just think it, it turns your world upside down. And I, I think that there's a place for grief and there's a place for anger, and it is the stage of, of healing. And I, I mm. think that when you go through something traumatic, it is just part of, you know, the healing process. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, 18 years later, no, I'm not angry anymore. I'm not angry at the boy who hit me. I'm not angry at anything with regards to it because I have had the chance to heal. And, and you know, like I said, I look at it all as it, it was gifts of lessons and many things I've learned from and grown from. And I've gotten so much more out of this bad event than I would have ever gotten out of life the way it was on a normal, if we can say normal, plane. Yeah. Gorgeous. And so you moved to Niagara and, and that was a, a point where you then went, okay, I'm, I'm creating a new life. Mm -hmm. And you, you did your bodybuilding. What else did you introduce into your life at that point? Um, well, I, I've done some triathlons. So I'm a triathlete. Uh, I started <laughs> focusing more on running and I, uh, I've done a few half marathons. And I ran my first full marathon last, <clears throat> excuse me, last fall, which again for me was just... When I finished, I was elated. Just the fact that look at what I've accomplished, and they told me I'd never do, never walk so, again. Yeah, that's and I just so awesome. for me, and that's what it's all about. I'm a bit of a self challenger and and that sort of thing. But yeah, moving to Niagara was um, a, an opportunity for me to not be the person everybody oh that's the lady who um, or walk with the cloud around your head where everybody knows your business and your life. And you know, I moved to Grimsby with. Uh, the intention of not really talking about my past because I didn't want everybody to associate events with who I am. I wanted people to know who I was and get to know who I am for who I am, not Gorgeous. yeah, based on events. And you, I remember from the previously you speaking to my husband that when you were bodybuilding, you ended up having mercury poisoning. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah, and I that did. led you down the road of you're actually a clinical nutritionist now. Is that uh, right? Yeah, I'm a holistic nutritionist now. Uh, I'm a chef by trade. Oh, this so, is amazing. Thank you. Um, yeah, and my whole journey of healing has been uh, very exciting and um, I'm very passionate about a holistic way of thinking and after my bodybuilding, I became not really sick, but I, well, I guess I was sick. I, I just couldn't understand why I had no energy, and, and yet I was eating very healthy, or what I thought was eat, eating very healthy, and I had some blood work done, and uh, yeah, I had mercury poisoning, and I would say it was probably from the, you know, the, the amount of fish I was consuming that was, you know, tuna from a can and that sort of thing, but um, I needed to find a better way to, to get my health back on track, and all the anesthetic in my body, and over all these operations and drugs from probiotic or from sorry uh, antibiotics and and not having taken probiotics, so my whole my whole way of thinking had started to change, and that was probably about three three years ago. Significantly changed, yeah. Congratulations. So, mm -hmm. and you took that again and educated yourself, and yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And you you've had a com complete career change. You mentioned previously you lost your job, and now you're. T you're moved into teaching, is that correct? Yeah, I was a gas fitter for 10 years for Union Gas right. before they switched to Union or to yeah Union Energy. Um, so I did that, and that's uh, the job that I had at the time um, of my accident.